Well, well, welcome to today's talk. It's Friday the 11th of August. Now, um, 0.7% of the deaths in the United Kingdom were attributable to COVID, and yet percentages of excess deaths in the United Kingdom and around the world remain high. These are not COVID deaths. And of that 0.7% of all deaths in the United Kingdom that were attributed or where COVID was involved, 38% it was definitely with, not from COVID. So we can see that these excess deaths are absolutely not attributable. The vast majority are not attributable to COVID and it goes on. And I, I must say, I feel a bit like the voice of one crying in the wilderness here. Where is the mainstream media? Where are the politicians? Few great exceptions around the world in Australia, in the United Kingdom, a few, but not that many shouting about this. Let's look at some data straight away now. Now, this is the Australia situation for excess mortality. Uh, over the compared to the previous year. So in Australia at the moment, we see it's round about what, about 16 percent. And that's up to date. That's that's as of uh, April 2023. So really quite significant excess deaths here uh, in Australia. And I've just put these countries more or less in alphabetical order, I think. Now, Canada, um, excess deaths down quite a bit in Canada. Let's hope that this is genuine data, but Canada is not known for keeping its data as up to date as other countries. So let's see about that. But if that is the case, then it is promising that this this pandemic uh, of excess deaths might be reducing in Canada. But let's let's wait and see on that one, because it's somewhat inconsistent with other countries. Uh, New Zealand. Again, we see excess deaths currently running about eight percent in New Zealand. Um, again, reasonably up-to-date data well yeah that's Ju that's july 2023 so that's pretty up to date um this one is uh netherlands now netherlands data is normally pretty good so it looks like netherlands excess deaths are down at the moment they have been up for quite long periods of time well above this line here which is zero percent let's hope that trend in the netherlands uh, continues um this is um Ireland, Ireland about 12% excess deaths at the moment and has been high for some time. Um, United Kingdom, um, a little lower this month, but on average, we're, that's of July 16th, we're running about, what, about 9% excess deaths in the United Kingdom, although thankfully lower for the latest data we have. And the United States, again, not going down. The United States, around about 8% more deaths than we would actually uh, expect. Now, these are significant numbers of increased deaths. just want to show you a little data from the United Kingdom now that gives us a bit more um, uh, subdivisions of that. Now, this is uh, excess mortality in England by uh, age group. Now, this is a 0 to 24 year old age group. And we see that during the pandemic years, 2020, 2021, less of these younger people were dying. Then as 2021 progressed, um, coincidentally, when the vaccine program uh, increased, the COVID vaccine program increased, the, the excess deaths uh, increased in that, uh, in that age group. So now we have excess deaths in this younger age group, um, well above what we would expect compared to previous years with that same uh, age group. This is uh, people 25 to 49. And again, um, pandemic highs, but 2021 high, remained high through 2021, through 2022, and sadly remaining high into uh, 2023 in the, uh, the, the adult age group, 25 to 49. Older age group, even more pronounced, uh, we see the excess deaths are high in the 50 to 64 year old age group and 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 remain so um again this is fairly up to date data over here still remaining high now uh this is causes of death now this one here is a uh, heart failure and we see that deaths from heart failure were higher in the pandemic as we would expect because we know that sars coronavirus 2 can attack the myocardium of course we also know that spike protein can attack the myocardium and trigger autoimmune reactions in the myocardium and myocardial failure, of course, will cause a heart failure. But we see that heart failure deaths remain high. And again, just to sort of 
emphasise this really, because no one else seems to be, uh, the remaining high through 2022 and 2023. Now, this is respiratory diseases. Now, if these had been post-COVID sequelae, we would expect um, a lot of deaths from respiratory diseases, but it's not what we're seeing. This is the category called other respiratory diseases, and we see that people are dying much less than we would expect from other respiratory diseases. So throughout other respiratory diseases throughout the pandemic, less people dying 2022, less people dying and uh, even into 2023, less people dying of other respiratory diseases than we would uh, expect. So it really is quite strange. And the other one that's higher, so other respiratory disease is lower, but the one that's higher here is uh, liver disease. Um, liver disease has been higher um, all the way through, really, in the pandemic. And then and then just look at this, 2022, 2023, um, deaths from um, cirrhosis and other liver disease, really quite markedly higher than we would expect. This is not the sort of pattern that we should really be seeing. Now, going on to some European data, which I want to look at today. This is from uh, Eurostat. So this is the official European Union um, uh, statistics, uh, EU excess mortality from Eurostat. Now, um, looking down here, it conveniently breaks this up into uh, different countries so we can hover over and get the information. So Finland, we see 12.4% um, excess mortality. Ireland, currently 12.16%. Uh, Portugal, 2 just over 2. Spain, 2.1. France, 3.85%, more than we would expect. Um, Austria, uh, well, Austria, wow, 13.175, higher than we would expect. But, and this is really interesting, when we look at some of the Eastern European countries, some of the poorer European countries, again, coincidentally, some of the countries that didn't vaccinate uh, as much for COVID, we see Bulgaria, uh, 8.74% less than we would expect. Romania, 12% less than we would expect. Um, hung Hungary, less than we would expect. We're seeing the, in these countries death rates less than we would expect. Um, now, this is what we would expect everywhere, really. This is what we would expect everywhere, because... During the pandemic, the people that died were the people that were most vulnerable. And therefore, they died a few years earlier than they would have done. And they're not dying now. So we would expect lower death rates globally everywhere at the moment. But we're seeing the exact opposite of that. Just going to give you a few more, uh, a little more information from the European Union area now. So this is the reference here for our world in data. Amazing site. Do check it out for yourself. So European Union excess mortality. These figures are up to date up to May 2023 from Eurostat. And this is a reliable collecting agency. So May 2023 excess deaths overall of Europe 2.99, 2.9%. But of course, this doesn't take into account the fact that the Western European countries have got higher death rates than this. And as we saw, the European, Eastern European countries like Romania, Hungary, Bulgaria, much lower. What, what was it, 8 or 9% less than we would expect. So this would be a much higher figure were it not for the Eastern European countries bringing that figure down. Um, again, no explanation given by mainstream media or governments. And this is above the pre-pandemic baseline of 16 to 19 now, April, it was 3.3% plus. May 2022, um, now, May 2022, it was plus 8%. Now, in May 2022, of course, that was the uh, Omicron wave. And we really wouldn't have expected 8% ex excess mortality from Omicron because it's so much more, uh, so much less uh, pathogenic. P people get way less sick than the previous variants. So again, 2022, unexplained, high, Excess mortality rate, 8%. Um, quite significant rates. May 2021, when we might expect some more, it was 10.7%. But these again, look at the numbers. This is 48,700 excess deaths. May 2020, 
during the first wave of the pandemic when we would expect excess to be high. OK, it was high, but only plus 3.1%. Um, so not following the COVID trajectories and uh, levels of expected excess deaths at all, really. Other factors clearly going on here. Um, Office for National Statistics from the UK. Um, week ending the 28th of July. Um, deaths registered in the United Kingdom. 63 of these deaths mentioned novel coronavirus. So 63 of the 9,684 deaths mentioned that. 0.7% of all deaths. Um, but only uh, 61.9, 39 deaths had this recording as the underlying cause of death. So what we can see is from the Office of National Statistics data, there was 39 deaths from COVID. From, this is from, according to their data, and even these could be debated. But we'll accept that for now. 39 deaths from COVID out of 9,684 deaths registered altogether. Um, so COVID representing what? Re realistically, less than half a percent of these deaths. And yet... Um, Europe and America and all over, we see higher deaths in the sophisticated Western countries. Um, Norway, 4% 4, 4, 4 higher than we would expect in Norway. Sweden, only 1.5. But the European countries, Poland, uh, Poland is 0.5% higher than we would expect. But as we say, uh, the, the, the other countries, Czech Republic there, less than we would expect. Slovakia, less than we would expect. Hungary less than we would expect, Romania 12% less than we would expect based on the years before the pandemic, but of course exactly what we would expect had the more vulnerable died during the pandemic. So there we have it. Where is the outcry from mainstream media? Where is the outcry from governments? OK, there's a few politicians in Australia that we've interviewed, for example, or put on this channel, and there's one or two or three We've got people like Andrew Bridgen and Esther McVeigh in this country, but, but um, very few talking about it. And in the United States, are, are we seeing um, senators bouncing up and down about this, saying, why are our people dying? Um, I must say I'm not as up to date with the United States. Let me know. But um, my impression is if they are, it's the vast minority. Uh, democratic uh, safeguards, those the democratic uh, democratically elected people that are there to um, represent us, uh, look after our interests, are failing on a huge scale. It's that simple. By not flagging this up, by not demanding explanations and working out strategies to make sure these excess deaths stop as soon as possible. So, um, yeah, I don't know, it's just, just bemusing. The deafening silence continues. And uh, I'm not making this up. All this data is here. You know, it's not just me. The data is there. Um, but it's a bit of a secret, apparently. As you can tell, I'm somewhat bemused, so I'm going to leave it there. And thank you for watching.